So I'd like to talk to you all tonight about a particularly amusing topic. Seasonality of death. <laughs> Admittedly, it's a little bit of a gloomy title, which is why I thought I'd find a nice image to go with it, just to lighten the mood somewhat. So I'll, I'll start off with a little fun fact for everybody. We will all die. It's an evening of comedy, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sort of interested, can we sort of say anything, can we know anything about when we will die? Or maybe even how we will die? And unrelated to what Steve's going to talk about later, this is not going to be about tarot, <laughs> or numerology, or any other form of fortune telling. And why not? Because we are not idiots. <laughs> Instead, I want to sort of talk a little bit about how science, and how statistics in particular, can shed some light on the topic of when we will die. And this is a topic that you may not know. People have been talking about when we might die for over two and a half thousand years. And we can trace back the earliest writings of this to this guy. You may know him. Uh, he's Hippocrates, the Greek physician, the founding father of modern medicine. This is one of the works that he wrote uh, on airs, waters and places. I say he wrote it, there's some debate about whether Hippocrates really wrote all the works in the Hipp Hippocratic Corpus, or whether it was really his students and followers. So he was really one of the proto-PIs, getting his name on everything, but doing very little of the work. Um, so in about 400 BC, he wrote this work where he looked at, well, he commented on the fact that you know, different diseases happen at different times of the year, and this may lead to seasonal variations in mortality. So that's what I'm going to start talking about, seasonal variation in mortality. It's a fun topic for everybody. And it's a very easy field of study because once you know when people die and what they died of, you can start pulling that together and making some observations. And people have been doing this for a long time. There is a lot of published research on seasonal variation in mortality. Here's just a snapshot. Um, seasonal variation of deaths in the United States. Seasonal variation in mortality in the Netherlands. Seasonal variation in mortality in Moscow. Seasonal variations, do you spot a pattern here? I think suddenly scientists could be a little more creative and imaginative with their titles. I would like to have seen a paper, we're all going to die, but no. And here's one more, seasonal changes in mortality in Japan. So many countries pull together their mortality statistics to see what they can find. And I can do everybody a, a favor of summarizing a lot of that research. Basically, there's two main things you need to know about seasonal variation mortality. When it's really, really hot, people die of heat-related problems. When it's really, really cold, people die of cold-related problems. And that's, you know, I've saved hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayer research there. Those are the principal findings. More people actually die in winter than summer, although deaths in the summer seem to get more attention in the news. I'm really interested, I think a fun, a more of a sort of fun, fascinating topic to look at is daily variation. Can we actually use science to say anything about what days of the week certain people die on? And indeed, we can. This is a report published by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare from about 10 years ago. Catchy title, I borrowed it from my talk tonight. Seasonality of death. So they looked at 20 years of data from Australia about when people died and what they died of. And they found, overall, more people in Australia die on a Friday or Saturday than any other day of the week. That's statistically significant. And fewer people die on a Tuesday. Note, this axis doesn't go all the way, this is a bit misleading. <coughs> The baseline is about 10,000 people different. And so they looked, why is this variation? Why are more Australians dying on the weekend, when I guess Neighbours isn't on the weekend back then? Uh, and it's car crashes. More motor accidents happen on the weekends in Australia because more people are driving. I don't know whether more people are drink driving. That could be one reason. But they also found that there are more suicides on a Monday than any other day of the week. And also, even more uh, acutely, Cardiac disease, there's more heart attacks in Australia on a Monday than any other day of the week. So if there are any Australians in the audience tonight, well done on making it through the weekend. <laughs> You've done a good job of surviving Monday. So I'm glad that you made it here. You can take it easy now, at least until Friday. So I'd like to sort of finish this segment by really bringing it a bit closer to home. And can we say anything about daily variation of deaths in the UK? And uh, we can. This is a paper that's attracted a lot of attention, sort of for the wrong reasons, really. It's been rather misrepresented. Weekend hospitalization and additional risk of death. And this is a key finding from this paper. We found clear evidence of the excess of mortality associated with admissions to hospitals in England on weekend days. So you may know about this because it's been in the news a lot. 
Why is it being, why am I saying it's being misrepresented? Well, here are two individuals. <laughs> One of these people is known for spreading fear and causing terror. <laughs> the other is the Gruffalo. <laughs> if you didn't know, this is Jeremy Hunt, Secretary of State for Health. Uh, he's, if you don't know anything about Jeremy Hunt, he's beloved by doctors, particularly junior <laughs> doctors. They, they love him. Uh, and last year, he went on record and said this thing about more people are dying, we need a seven-day NHS. And I don't really want to talk about the politics of the NHS, I want to talk about science and statistics. So why did he say this? Did he really mean it? And this has led... This is a, this, it's got a Wikipedia page, this has to be real. The Hunt Effect. Because he's spread this rumour that maybe 15% more people die on the weekends, now people actually believe this, and people, this is an observer poll, one in three adults are now delayed getting medical help at weekends, which is terrible. So perhaps more people are probably dying now because of this perception <laughs> than the reality. So what actually is the reality of this situation? So you may have heard the statistic that 15% more people <laughs> die at the weekends. That's a relative risk. If you get to go back to the paper, they're not saying that hospitals are more intrinsically dangerous at the weekend. They actually say the opposite. You've got a reduced risk of dying if you are already in a hospital at the weekend. So if you're planning a heart attack, think <laughs> Thursday, Friday, get in hospital for the weekend, and you've got a lower chance of dying. And the actual numbers underlying this is that for every 1,000 people that die on a Monday to Friday, 1,002 people die on a Saturday or Sunday. That's the difference. It's significant. You may find it hard to visualize those numbers, so I've made this, <laughs> I've made this handy chart. 1,000 versus 1,002. And there are good reasons why there's this daily variation, and it may be nothing to do with the quality of care in hospitals. Here's another paper. Um, I don't like Mondays. This, looked at, this is in the British Medical Journal. It looked at people who die in Scotland of heart disease. And more people in Scotland die on Mondays than any other day from heart disease, and more people die on also the weekend. Why is this? Alcohol. Shocking conclusion for any of you who have been to Scotland. But <laughs> the paper reported that effectively people binge drink in Scotland on the weekend and die on a Monday from alcohol-related problems. <laughs> they also showed that more people in general in Scotland die on the weekend. So just because more people die in NHS hospitals, think about that background factor that there's different reasons why people die on different days of the week. Um, I'm going to conclude by saying, so Monday is not particularly good. Monday is more likely to die of suicide, more likely to die of heart attack. But there's some other stuff which I didn't really get time to go into. Actually, New Year's Day, you're more likely to die on New Year's Day than any other day of the year. You're more likely to die at 11 o'clock a.m. than at any time during the day. So I'll end by giving you all a date for your diaries. Monday the 1st, 2018, January. This is the next time that Monday falls on New Year's Day, so my parting advice today will be <laughs> stay in bed at least until 11.01. <laughs> And maybe you'll make it through the rest of the year, okay? So thank you very much. Um, this is something I do in my spare time. Take Home Message is a webcomic about biology and science. I have a talented colleague who does all these beautiful cartoons, and I don't. So thank you very much. <laughs>